How was your October? It was very mild here in Norfolk, but it did enable us to get much done in the garden. But with November here, if you haven't done so already, many of us are going to experience our first frost of the autumn and winter period. And so we have for you our veg gardening jobs for November. Hello and welcome back to the New Dig Norfolk Gardener. My name is Barry and we grow our vegetables here in our garden in Norfolk in Zoom 9A. So jobs for the month. This weekend that's approaching will be bonfire night, November the 5th. And all of our family are descending here with us and we're going to be setting off a few fireworks, but equally having a fire. Now, you've probably seen throughout the year, if you follow our channel, that we've been building a bonfire, putting things on it that we know we can burn in November. But before you set light to anything at this time of the year, do dismantle it and have a look and make sure there's no wildlife under there, in particular things like hedgehogs that will often go under there to hibernate. You can see just there, we've just moved the things off. So we now know that there are, there is no wildlife hibernating or sleeping or trying to hide under there. And the afternoon of the day that we're going to have the bonfire, we shall start to construct it and put bits on at a time. Fire and heat is not very good for your plants. Um, we don't have huge acres of space. This is a, basically a garden. Well, it is our garden. So we need to protect some of our plants. And in particular, you can see we've put some, just some old things that we find laying around just to stop these leaves getting too hot and being scorched. So do think of all of these things before you have any of your bonfires in your garden. Now, November is the start of the pruning regime. There's a lot of pruning that can be done during November. And also for things like red currants and black currants and blackberries, plants like that, this is the ideal time of the year now to take hardwood cuttings of those. As far as pruning goes, it's the time of year now to prune things like your blackberries. The autumn raspberries which have now finished, they need to be pruned and it's also the beginning of the time when you can now start to prune your freestanding apples and pear trees. Now what I would say is when it comes to things like the blackberry and the autumn raspberries, this is just the beginning of the time when you can start to do it in November. But really with all of these things all the pruning wants to be done while either the bushes or the trees are dormant. So that is generally any time between November and February of the following year. But do check before you prune anything that it is okay to prune that the plants have gone dormant because we've had quite a mild year this year and it's still mild here in Norfolk. Now we're still seeing daytime temperatures anywhere between 14 and 17, 18 degrees. With the occasional plummet down to about 10 or 12 when we get these rather heavy rain showers that keep coming along. So yeah, so say do make sure that there isn't anything sappy about and that, you know, these plants have indeed gone dormant. And a good sign for that is when you start to see all the leaves starting to drop off. Now, clearly this hasn't lost all of its leaves yet. Um, but it is starting to lose its leaves. They are starting to come off. These come from a tree from the woodland there, these different shaped leaves, but this is starting to lose its leaves. So just as an example, this is how mild it has been. Look, can you see this, our apple tree here? It's actually trying to shoot and grow new leaves. Now normally, when November is here, 
this is not happening to our apple trees so it just gives you a good indication of just how mild it still is. Now if like us you have problems with the birds that like to come after your brassicas and for us it's pigeons uh, don't forget this time of the year to actually net your brassica plants. If you don't have to during the year but you have problems in autumn you know now's a good time to be doing that so that they don't get pecked at and eaten before you have a chance to eat them. Our sprouts are under there I'm not going to get the covers off right here and now but one of the jobs you do want to be thinking about doing is that if they are now starting to get top heavy with their harvests and we've got buttons appearing on ours then you want to be thinking about staking your Brussels sprouts if you haven't done so already. And I know you've seen us do as we did a little earlier in the year and that was the purple sprouting broccoli where we put the stakes in. But if you remember in that video I said these are fine for now but as the plants grow taller we're going to have to put larger stakes in and probably more sturdier ones because these plants really are now getting to get quite large. So it's another job to add to the list for us in November and that's to get some nice sturdy stakes into these purple sprouting broccolis. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine there's not a huge amount that you can sow or plant out at this time of the year but a little earlier in October you'll have seen us plant our outdoor shallots and garlic in this bed and it's not too late to be doing that you can do that through November we choose to do ours at the beginning of October some people go as early as September there's actually the window is quite long you know for anywhere from September through to about February next year ideally September and October so that they have a long growing time and you can get larger bulbs and also they go through that period where it's quite cold for a few weeks so that it can form its bulbs. We talked about pruning a little earlier in the video but also during November this time of the year it's a good time to be planting fruit bushes and new trees and shrubs and of course it's still not too late to plant your broad beans to overwinter and do an autumn planting if you so wish to do so. We did ours last month um, but you can do it right through November in fact right up probably to the beginning of December. Now with it being November we are entering the last month of autumn so it's not going to be too long before it's winter but if like us you've sown seeds earlier in the year and got them into the ground July and August you'll still have much to harvest and so do we there is much that can still be harvested at this time of the year it can be just as bountiful as all those lovely summer crops that we have so what can we be harvesting well you've already seen us harvest things like cauliflower cabbages and they're still providing us with food we have calibres you saw us cut those earlier in the month um, there's only a couple of more heads now to go for us to actually pick but we are starting to get the side shoots now so hopefully we get those side shoots continuing until the weather gets really really cold. You can also be harvesting things like carrots, parsnips, leeks and celeriac and depending on when you actually planted your sprouts out could actually be time to be harvesting your sprouts and again depending on when you plant your purple sprouting broccoli and which variety it is that could start to harvest in November one thing I did just want to mention if you just follow me Mrs W clearly you can see with this this is still in flower and I think we've shown you at various times there's some marigolds still up the garden there which are still in flower that's a, an indication of just how mild it has been but if we just look over here the other side of these parsnips you can see that these have finished their flowering period now there are seeds on them and if you want to save your seed then do so we've spoken about that several times on our videos we actually don't need any more seeds of these because we've been taking them since sort of late September and through October but as these plants get to this stage you can twist them out of the ground now and then they can go onto the compost heap 
It's a great time of the year for the compost heaps because if you think all these parsnips, these carrots, they all have green foliage, your brassicas, in fact everything in this garden has green foliage, that does the compost heap really really good. It's full of nitrogen and it will start to heat that compost up and start the process off at this time of the year. Now we've just popped into the greenhouse not least because we need to talk about um, the jobs to do in the greenhouse during November but uh, that's suddenly got a little bit windy so um, we don't want the sound quality to deteriorate too much so we'll speak in here. Now if you just look to the left you can see the strawberries that are there. This is a good time of the year now to tidy your strawberries up so the leaves that will eventually die um, you want to have those off and just tidy the plants up in general if they've sent some runners out and you haven't yet taken them off get them clipped off so that they aren't sapping energy from the parent plant and just tidy the plant up in general so it's ready to go through into winter and is ready to hit the ground running when the lovely spring weather arrives. Now you might well think to yourself that I haven't seen that bed <laughs> where did that come from? Well that's for a future video. Now, although we're here in the greenhouse, regardless whether you've got plants indoors or outdoors, it's always a good idea as you come along to check your plants for pests. And although in the main, these look really quite good and healthy, there's not too much wrong with them, but you see something is in here because they do get a bit of a nibble. These pet choy looking really nice. I feel like some pet choy leaves in this chicken stir fry, Mrs. W. Why not? So yeah, as you're harvesting, as you're coming out here and doing a bit of weeding, do check around your plants to check for any diseases or pests that you might have that are actually eating your crops. Now, although it's quite dull here at the moment and the wind has got up, I can assure you that earlier on today, the sun was shining very, very brightly. This is a glass house. And although it might be windy outside, it can still get quite warm under the glass. So do monitor your temperatures in the greenhouse. And if it gets, does really get hot and the sun is shining, as I say, like us, we've been seeing sometimes temperatures of 17 and 18 degrees. Just pop the windows open, the vents open by day, just so you can let some of that heat out and these plants don't scorch. But equally, you need to monitor those temperatures because if you have plants that you need to keep warm, we don't, this remains a cold greenhouse all year round. But if you've got plants that you particularly need to keep warm to keep a certain temperature, then you need to monitor those temperatures so that you know when to switch the heating on. Now, right at the beginning of the video, you saw me watering the plants that are in here. That's quite important for the greenhouse. Don't forget that if you are like us, popping your plants into the greenhouse, they still need watering. You know, although it can rain quite heavily outside there sometimes, this doesn't receive that rain. We need to do it for these plants and get the water in here. But what I would say is that where possible, try to avoid splashing the water too much on the leaves. And especially if you're going to water, in the late afternoons. Remember this is autumn and here in the UK the clocks have gone back. So it now gets dark here around about, well it's certainly dark by half past five and by the end of this month it's going to be half past four. And of course if you water the plants very late in the day and the, all the water is on the foliage that means that they're going to go to bed rather damp. Um, and that can encourage more disease. Now, as we've gone around the garden, talking about the jobs for the month, shows sure there's plenty of leaves that are about in our garden, especially at the top end. All those trees that you can see behind us, that woodland that's behind our garden, they're now starting to drop their leaves and they will only continue to do it through the month of November. Now, we have to take the trouble to go and rake them up, pick them up, hoover them up with our vacuum hoover, <laughs> but they're a valuable source 
and you can make things, you can make leaf mould from them, which is lovely stuff to put on your beds. So do gather those leaves up if you're like us and you've got leaves in the garden. Um, just put them in a plastic bag, prick a few holes in it, tuck them behind your shed, leave them there for a couple of years, and then when you go back to them, you'll have some lovely, lovely, rich compost. Now, if like us, you have lawns, we don't have wood chip paths. We like the greenness of the lawns around our veg patch. As I said before, at the moment, the temperatures are still very mild. But equally, it's also wet. We're having frequent showers. And then a good dollop of sunshine. That tends to make the lawn grow. Yes, even at this time of year. So, yeah, if you're seeing your, you know, don't forget to mow your lawns if they're starting a little bit long, because it will get to a point where everything will be so damp and wet that it then becomes difficult to cut the lawn. And if you are mowing your lawn at this time of the year, don't forget to raise the height of your blades. If you're like us and your new dig, as your beds become empty after you've taken the final harvest from them then don't forget to spread your layer of compost to feed that soil for the coming year's crop and if like us some of your compost is not really really fine this is a good time to get it onto the beds because you then have all of the winter winds frost and all of the bad weather that we dislike thrown at it over that period and then when you come back to it in spring it will have broken down really quite nicely. Our first average frost date is November, mid-November. So around about the 14th, 15th of November is when we can expect to start seeing our first cold night and frosts. And I remember a few years back learning to my cost that Taps, outdoor taps and water pipes do freeze and they burst and then you have to go to the trouble to get those repaired and everything put right. So do take my advice and don't let that happen to you and wrap your pipes and any outdoor taps to keep the cold frost off them so that they don't freeze up so that when you go back to them again next spring you'll just be able to turn that tap and out will flow the water. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did and you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. And please do leave us your comments. We only tell you about the jobs that we know about that we do around here. But if you've got other jobs and I haven't mentioned them, do put them down in the comments for everybody else to be able to read and see because it might just jog their memory. Oh yes, that's something I must do. And then when we come to make the November jobs for 2023, I'll go back through all those comments. And if there's anything that I didn't say on the video today, I'll ensure that it's put into the video for next year's November vegetable garden jobs. And we shall see you next time. <laughs>